Hello, I'm Leanne Jackson, Senior Law Editor at Forbes, and today I am joined by John Phillips. He's a Jacksonville attorney who has come to speak with me about the biggest cases he's working on and also the Trump trial, which is going on currently here in New York City. Now, John does civil rights law, criminal defense, as well as plaintiff's work in Jacksonville handling some really big cases. He also handled uh, a case with um, Omarosa, who uh, Trump had sued her for violation of a non-disclosure. That was a few years ago. Thank you for joining me, John. My pleasure. So what a great space. <laughs> thanks. Great to have you in studio. I know we've talked to you before. You're a great guest. And I did want to talk to you because, of course, the case du jour that everyone's mm -hmm. talking about, the unprecedented case against the President of the United States, the criminal hush money trial that's happening in Manhattan uh, court here. Now, Michael Cohen, the star witness for the prosecution, has been testifying. I believe the he's been cross-examined today, if I'm not incorrect. How do you think that's been going in terms of the prosecution's case in chief and how he's presented himself? I, I think they had a roadmap and they're, they're moving down the roadmap. I think they're doing a good job. Um, it, it, it's tough with a case like that because it's you know, you have all these sensational facts. You have hush money to a stripper, um, uh, you know, basically. And it, it has all these side issues that have to tie into campaign finance laws. And they're doing a good job kind of keeping enough sensation in there that, that you, you know, it's part of the facts. You can't separate it while sticking to you know the core issues and and what michael cohen did now again michael was a part of all of this you know and and michael would love to say mea culpa that's the old me but you know i've talked to michael and and he's a, he's an interesting guy yeah and and that's part of the issue for the prosecution and what the the opening that the defense is trying to take is that this is a convicted liar right. he's perjured himself you can't trust this witness however he is crucial to the building blocks as you mentioned of the prosecution's case from what you know the media isn't allowed in the courtroom but a lot of the observers have said he's tried to stick to just the facts right what do you think especially as, as a um, experienced defense attorney yourself uh, a litigator how crucial is it that that witnesses be credible and how do you cross that nexus when they may not be yeah you know it's coming during cross-examination you know they're gonna get to the credibility issues to tear apart your your, your witness take their legs off and and I know the strategy here and I've seen part of it is is to kind of get get to the core of what his testimony is get to the good parts and then at some point say, oh yeah, and by the way, you've you've perjured yourself. You've you've you know you've been convicted for being a liar. Um, are you lying today? And and you've you've got to work that in. Uh, lawyers greater than and than me, you know, older than me, called it embracing the horror, right? You you've got to you've got to deal with the bad facts of your case. And and Cohen brings that. He was. You know the bag man for the for for Donald Trump, um, but because of the nature of this case and it having, you know, the core witnesses having, you know, past backgrounds backgrounds, <laughs> Let's just that, backgrounds that are yeah. that are that are less than what you normally see in federal less court. than stellar right. Um, I, I I think people understand and. and and that's part and parcel with the case, right? The, the, these were these were the people that that Donald Trump chose, right? They chose Michael Cohen. He chose Stormy Daniels. Um, he chose Omarosa, right? Over and over and over again. And he, 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 some have criticized, even within his inner circle, about like, wait, why do you why do you keep these people around? And I, I think there's just there was some kind of mutually symbiotic thing that, that he found uh, on people that, that needed him. Um, it, it, it's, it, it kind of fed his narcissistic edge, I think. And worked potentially for his business interest in some way that the prosecution, at least, is trying to um, create a, a nexus for. And what's interesting about Michael Cohen's testimony as well is that it does come down to a little bit of 
he said, she said. There's no right. hard documentation that can tie the case for the prosecution to Donald Trump to, to elevate it from misdemeanor financial crimes to the felonies. It's a 34 count indictment that they're trying to bring together. So what, what do you think? We're going to let you speculate. Use your ESP to oh. kind of your psychic ball to see if this is going to play with the jury, let alone the court of public opinion. I, I, I mean, the court of public opinion is 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 so polarized and, and, and kind of separate here. It's going to play to the people that, that want to hear it. And it's going to be, um, you know, witch hunt to those that don't. The core middle that, that tends to decide elections, that tends to 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 go along with the flow until they have to you know choose a hard path um i i think they need to take a real stern look at this and 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 again this is this is the president of the united states getting to some extent recorded by his own lawyer trying to weaponize media um, to to put a hush on and a non-disparage and, and non-disclosure on, on somebody he had a sexual relationship with. There's no dispute of that part. Well, he and has claimed that he... I, he has, but I, I, I think it, anybody that knows Donald knows, you know, that's, that's, that's the least credible of his lies, you know? Um, I think everybody understands that. Uh, he considers himself a ladies man um, but it's it, it's fascinating to watch but it's also you know and I, again I was I was in it I was in that circle for a few mm -hmm. years and it and it, it it's filthy you know and he was the one deposition that I didn't get we tried. <laughs> Um, you know, I wanted his deposition so bad and we tried every which way we could, but, but just to sit across from somebody like that and, and, and get into their head for a little bit, um, you know, it's probably the, the one thing I've missed thus far in my career. Uh, we didn't need it, you know, um, yeah, you ultimately, um, recovered 1.3 right. million judgment. But he's, he's a fascinating character in American history just because he's, he's, to me, so unlikable. Well, to pivot a little bit from right. uh, Trump's trial, because this, this is the first of his uh, several criminal cases, and what's interesting also is that some people say this one is the least of his problems, but the others have been delayed. Right. So we'll see what happens with this case. But to, to the point of you having litigated against Trump and his defense team uh, in the non-disclosure dispute with Omarosa, for which you were awarded $1.3 million in, in damages and a judgment, Having to you then subsequently you were in the news, national news because mm -hmm. of this case. What is important for other lawyers to know, like when you get propelled into the pub, into publicity like this, to be media savvy as a lawyer? What does that mean, and to help to help your case or potentially hurt it? Yeah, it's in, in no offense. You you've got to you've got to treat media with with kind of healthy apprehension, right? They they, they have a story to to tell, but so do you. In most of my cases, if not nearly all of my cases, I look for ways outside of a courtroom to tell a story. My office even trademarked public display of justice, right? Because, you know, the way I say it in, in, in conference rooms with clients is, you know, justice is spelled one way, it's defined many different ways. For Omarosa's case, you know, certainly there was her getting weaponized, you know, having litigation weaponized against her, seeking millions of dollars. Um, but it also, it also, because of the non-disparage aspect, sought to, to keep her from saying a single negative thing while he ran for re-election. And, and you've got to take cases piecemeal, um, you know, and, and, and part of it was coaching Omarosa when to speak. And, and that didn't take much, right? She knows. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, lawyers have, have an inherent distrust in the media. And certainly there's the rule in nearly every state that, that prohibits us from jury tampering through the media, right? Or spoiling the ability for a, a either side to get a fair trial. But, 
that requires a, a, a jury trial to be set. That requires something in the future that doesn't prevent interviews. It doesn't prevent press conferences. Uh, it, you know, the media has always been, you know, great for me in my cases. Um, you know, and, and it's, it, it, it's something that, that can really help a lawyer. You, the, it, it, it's a tool in the trade that, you know, that, that you need. Um, certainly there's, there's certain trademark copyright lawyers, um, you know, corporate lawyers that, that want no part of it. I understand that. But for the, for the litigator to be afraid of the media um, is, it, it can deprive justice to your client because there is the, the court of public opinion, as you brought up, that really is important. And sometimes, depending if it's a if you're a criminal defense case, a lot of times the prosecutors are able to say so many things. The police are able to go out there and say things. Right. You have to be able to try to work, find a way to also get your side across. Yeah, and and, and in some of our cases, you know, there is a perception of good versus evil or right versus wrong, and I have in my career allowed the other side, you know, too much oxygen because typically they were on, they had a separate criminal trial. And the last thing I wanna do is, as the civil lawyer, YNW Melly, for instance. I represent one of the, the victims of, of, that were in the car with YNW Melly, who, who he's accused of murdering, two of his friends. Can you describe a little bit more about that? Yeah, case yeah, so, so, so the rapper YNW Melly, his name's Jamel Demons, he was leaving a studio with, with two of his best friends. I mean, core since they were eight years old. And they wound up, wound up shot and killed inside the car. Uh, the evidence pinpoints Demons leaving the scene of the accident with another rapper, and he claims he was never there. And so they tried the case. They're, the state of Florida is actually seeking the death penalty. Um, they mistried it, so they need 12 jurors in a death penalty case to, to convict. They mistried it. Uh, I think there were two jurors that, that held out. And, and this was a case you feel like you could have done yeah, something differently with the media. Yeah, I, I think I think I, I – and, and again, it gets into the nature of the media. I, I, I think that there are times that you, you don't want to interfere with a criminal case, but on the same token – you know, in that particular case, there's there was there's gang associations and and you know as a lawyer you can actually wind up in fear yourself, right? Um, but it, there's there's a very clear narrative that outlines how I believe he killed these two boys um, or was complicit in their killing. And you represented friend. one of the, the victims. I represent one of the victims. Gotcha. Yeah. And our civil trial won't go until after the criminal trial. So by the time I tell my story, it's over. You know, kind of O.J. Simpson logic. Like mm -hmm. by the time Ron Goldman got to got to found him, find O.J. guilty of wrongful death, the, the criminal trial is already over. He's been acquitted. And that is the ultimate measure family, a family wants to see. They want to see their, their killer convicted. They want justice, right? They don't want the wrong, they don't, don't want a wrongful conviction. But it, it was a case that, that you know, I did regret on, on kind of the post-criminal post trial that that state attorney team didn't have our information, right? And, I, and I've got to do a better job to convey that information. Going forward, and, yeah. and, and whether that's, you know, sending emails that are public records or, or doing, doing, you know, press conferences or, or press releases, you know, it's, it, again, it goes back to, to all of the tools a lawyer needs to be able to litigate these high profile cases. That makes sense. And speaking of high profile cases, you were mentioning some other, the other others that you're involved with that you, Dollar General and right. some, can you tell us a little bit more about what's going on with that? Right. Last year, uh, a, 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 white male name we don't we don't use his name uh went into a dollar general store in jacksonville florida and 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 particularly targeted uh african-americans shot and killed three african-americans would have would have killed a store full had had he had he gotten there um and 
after police came into the building, he, he killed himself. So, so, you know, the criminal case, as it were, Did not cleared exist. by suicide, yeah, right? Exactly. So, so the family can't get that measure of justice. And, you know, certainly there's a, there's a negligent security case and there's, there's, there's a lawsuit you could file, for instance, against, wrong, uh, against Dollar General. Okay, that's fine, right? That's a measure of justice. But Ryan, the, the shooter, was, was one of these guys who, who it wrote a manifesto. And I don't even like giving these guys credit for a manifesto because that, that assumes a level of intelligence and, 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 and desire to get over an agenda when most of these manifestos are plagiarized from the prior manifesto. But, you know, in reading the manifesto and, and in recognizing the plagiarism within it and the concept, so excuse me for, for saying it, but the, the concept repeatedly in that manifesto and other manifestos is total inward death, right? It, here's, a, here's a stupid white male who feels that African Americans have so much power, right? Uh, that that he needs to annihilate them. I, I guess he didn't understand the history of this country. That I understand that that's never been the case. Um, but it, you have to. Where America has gotten it really wrong is we just let them go. We just let it be cleared by suicide. And there's. There's entire internet databases, dark web areas where these ideologies are communicated. Mm -hmm. And with President Trump, with, 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 the, with the insurrection, we've actually made it mainstream right. to be, to to be separatist yeah. and, and, to be, and, and to express them out loud. Right. Now, right? It's, it's okay to, to be vocal about these. And, and there's a particular scene from, from, from last year's uh, or, or last term's re-election bid by Trump, where he went into this 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 gun store called Palmetto State Armory, mm -hmm. and they made a gun for President Trump. Now he's an indicted felon; he can't own a gun. Um, and and they kind of say, "Oh, we got you this gun," and then everybody's like, "Wait, no, oops!" And they washed it from the internet. Palmetto State Armory is, is this, this gun store slash manufacturer in South Carolina that creates AR-15s and literally etches separatist ideology in their gun parts. Build a wall. Mm -hmm. uh, Bugaloo Boys references. Uh, OK Karen. Um, things that, that some could just say, oh, that's just free speech. Uh, that's, that's just marketing gimmicks. But the problem is it wasn't to Ryan, right? He custom ordered a gun to be delivered to Florida from that particular store. And, and we're in a dangerous, dangerous world where we're gonna justify First Amendment and Second Amendment correlation when what we're doing is armoring, arming people that have a, 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 an the inability to know right from wrong and why should they because the president is espousing it so right? you're you're pursuing a novel approach in your lawsuit against the armory is yeah that under florida law you can do a what's called a pure bill of discovery so you can sue somebody for information mm -hmm. before you sue them for damages and we want to open up this gun store we also want to open up some of the uh some of the social media databases and really get to the core of of how this information is shared because you can't you, know, you can't literally supply a gun to somebody who was so bent on TND um, total destruction of a race right. um, and and just say okay that was just a joke right and, and you can't profit off of like like 4chan type type databases you can't profit off of social media you know, warehouses and allow people to say whatever they want and just just 
kind of walk away and say, well, that was fun. You know? So you're in the discovery phase to find out what they knew and Correct. the level of yeah. information? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, with, with all of our cases, and again, it's use of media, it's use of the mm-hmm. criminal system, it's, it's, it, it certainly involves settlements, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, justice has to be spelled with, with more than a jury's verdict. It, 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 and, and if we think that, that we're just going to not have any more you know, mass shooters and any more manifestos and any more race-based killings, just wait a week. It's going to happen. Um, and, and, you know, JSO, Jacksonville Sheriff's Office and, and the FBI, they, they don't, they don't have a, they have victims, but they don't, they don't have a perp, you know, they don't, they, they, it's cleared. The case is cleared. So, you know, a lawyer's obligation is to do more to better the law and to better justice after you. And that's, that's one of the things we take pretty seriously. Well, that's really um, a fascinating case. It'll be interesting to see how um, that turns out very quickly. Are there any other cases that you wanted to speak about? I think we have a few minutes. But Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's always an interesting um you know, month at the at the firm. There's there's all in so many of our cases I- involve incredible violence, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and like you know, there's there's a, a young girl named Madison who was had a had a boyfriend. She, Madison just turned eighteen. She was seventeen at the time. Had an eighteen year old boyfriend, um, and the boyfriend just just couldn't get over being broken up with. And like a lot of teenage girls in, in, in 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s deal with that stalker ex-boyfriend, right? And it's, again, like, like a lot of incidents, it's not a problem until it is. And he, he wound up stabbing her to, to the point of paralysis. And her mother was there and her mother got stabbed in the head. And, and it, it's going to jury trial in July and then we're going to pick up from there. But it's, it's, you know, God bless, God bless girls like Madison, who's, who's going to college this semester and she's going to start talking about, about healthy relationships, mm-hmm. that's right? A, that's amazing, the, there's yeah. gotta be a butterfly effect that comes from, from opportunities in life and from, from tragedy. And I know you've said in the past, like not all of these cases are you going to be able to recover, right. you know, sometimes it is just putting it out there, putting it on the board, so to speak, getting the case in the public eye in order to try to change the narrative. Well, and I did defense work for, for about a decade and, and I know what then still to this day, to some extent, what jury verdict reporters and computers said cases are worth. Right. And I faced it in, in, you know, Jordan Davis's case and Brandon Green's case, you know, a, a young black life isn't worth as much on the data uh, as, as a, as a older white male uh, or a white female. And that is absolutely wrong. The, the loss to the parents is the same. The loss to their children is the same. And, and, you know, we'll go try cases if, if, you know, we can't do too many per year, but we try to try a case or two per year that are just focused on showing that juries aren't beholden to jury verdict reporters and, and, and bad computer data. Well, that's, um, it's, important work. It's interesting work. It's also very tragic work. I really appreciate you joining us. Congratulations again on being America's top 200 attorneys. It's very clear you deserved this honor. And I, again, um, will hope to speak to you soon about some of the cases that are in the news and about what you're working on as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time, John.